to the webinar this evening. We're going to be talking all about overcoming solopreneur stress. Yeah, Sue, Sally, I'm so, so glad to see you guys. Thank you so much for coming tonight and spending my, your Monday night with me. I know we're talking about stress tonight, but I really do know that this is going to be an awesome, awesome webinar for you guys. I know that there were a couple of people who had a couple of issues joining. So I am um, responding. I'm just sending this email out to two people to get them going. And then we are good to go. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. And I actually did this webinar way back in the day for my general clients. And I think this is going to be a really great webinar for you guys too. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start sharing my screen. And tonight I'm going to have a little bit more interaction with you all. So if you have access to a the chat while we're doing this lovely webinar, I would love to hear what you have to say. So today I want to know who you help with your business. Go ahead and put it in the chat and I will get you, I want to hear whoever went A's and I'll give you a little shout out as well. So for instance, I help people overcome, I help entrepreneurs make more income and impact in less time. So I want to hear more about you guys. What do you do? Who do you help? And actually, I know many of you guys. Okay, Sally, I help mothers and children uncover the root cause of their health challenges. Amazing. Love this. And we're going to get started in one more minute. Just to let the two people that have been having some difficulties get on. I think they were using the last webinar link, <laughs> which is totally fine. That happens all the time. Yes, I was like a travel agent. I was like, Susan, helping people plan trips with travel ideas and plans. Yeah, helping ambitious women to overcome overwhelm and create balance in their lives and careers as a life coach. Amazing. And I know many of you guys. So this is going to be a really fun one for you because we're going to be talking all of, a lot about like stressors. And for those of you that are life coaches, you're going to be hearing some of the talks, the same concepts that you might know, but just in a really different way. So today I want to know, I want you to know there are lots of reasons why solopreneurs are stressed. I know that this is one of the most challenging careers and in on average, solopreneurs say that they experience burnout at 56% more than like the general public, I think is like 40%. So on average, solopreneurs are 16% more stressed than the average public. And I want you to know that you're in the right place. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed and you're stressed thinking about your business, there are so many different things that you might be feeling. So we're going to be talking all about where that overwhelm is coming from and how to prevent it. If you are feeling like you need a little motivation, we are towards the end of the third quarter, going into the fourth quarter, and this is a time for you to finish strong for the year. And if you're struggling to get your work done, I really think tonight is going to be so helpful for you. Also, Nilo, hey, it's great to see you. If you are feeling exhausted and you're just feeling like, okay, I am just drained and tired, been there, done that, that's one of the reasons why I did this whole webinar, and I think this is going to be really helpful for you. If you're ready for a little bit of a moment to refocus, if you're feeling just like, whoa, this is a lot going on with work and you're feeling constantly like out of control with your work, this is going to be extremely helpful for you. If you are overworking, even if you are one of my night and weekend hustlers, I have got you and I know that this is definitely a typical thing that happens. And if you are just ready to get some solutions and practice like super quick practical things that you can start implementing this week. That's my goal is for you. So one of the things that I have lovingly started to call this is the tornado to potato effect. 
you like rate, give me like a thumbs up if, or like raise your hand if you feel like you've experienced this because I know that this is me. I will go from 120 miles an hour to just totally stopping. And I'll, what happens is I feel like I'm just stressing and cramming and just waiting to the last minute and then just stopping until I, because I literally can't. And that is one of the things that we want to prevent because as a solopreneurs, you are the person who is moving the ship forward. If you stop, the business stops. And so tonight we want to talk about how to maintain throughout the stressors, mitigate the stressors so you can really create more success within your business. So today I want to help have you leave here feeling more confident that you know how to complete your work without stress. I also want to teach you the importance of relaxing when you're not working. It's actually really important for your brain to turn off. And then also how to feel more energized and really like enjoy your business again. That's one of the reasons why I think a lot of us start these businesses, they're passion projects. We love what we do. And then all of a sudden, after we experience the stress of solopreneurship that is real, what happens is it can kind of drain us. So let's get that energy back again tonight. Now, I have a lot to go over tonight, but I wanted to give a quick introduction to myself. If we haven't met, which I think I know every single one of you that's on here, but I know there are a bunch of people who are going to be watching the replay. And if we haven't met formally, I just want to say, hey, I'm Megan and I'm the founder of Six Figure Systems. I love to help, like I mentioned previously, entrepreneurs make more impact and income in less time. And one of the things that has really helped me is my background in life coaching. So I was actually a life coach before I was a business coach. And there were systems that I learned while I was coaching that I have used over the last four years of my business. I started my business back in 2020 and I actually... I did a little revenue check and I'm now at $670,000 in the past four years, which is pretty phenomenal. And so one of the reasons why this is happening for me is because I haven't had the situation where I burnt out entirely. I figured out ways to mitigate the stressors. And I actually started as a career coach before I was a life coach. And I think my background in the career and life coaching world have led me to the same success within my coaching business, my business coaching business. So tonight we're going to go over, like I mentioned, many things. We're going to talk about really the root cause of our stress culture and the problems that happen in our society. So the reason why you're stressed is not your fault. There's a lot of things that are in our culture that promote stress over work-life balance. And we're going to talk about how to mitigate that. Then we're going to get into explaining burnout and why you might be getting burnt out within your business. And I'm not going to just leave you there. We're going to talk about solutions. I'm going to make sure that you know how to overcome stress as a solopreneur. We're going to talk about how to mitigate current stressors. And then we're also going to talk about how to prevent future stressors. There's going to be a smidge of application tonight, so we're going to be typing in the chat, but feel free to message me afterwards if you have any questions. I include my email at the end, and I also want to let you know about there's going to be an early enrollment bonus that I'm giving away this week that will end on Friday, so I want to let you know about Six Figure Systems itself and ways that you can overcome burnout and stressors within there, and then, of course, Q&A. So... That is the deal for this evening. Now, what I think a lot of times is we think we know the problems that create stress. We think that we the stressors are coming from the lack of consults, or maybe it is the overload on your to-do list, or we think that it's the technology. My goodness, I'm like, <laughs> the technology struggles, friends, I was actually locked out of Facebook and all of Instagram, which is my main source of marketing all of last week. So that was a fun experience. I got, and I don't even know if I mentioned this to any of my clients, but I, it was, an, it was a journey. <laughs> so I think that what happens is as we experience the stressful circumstances within our lives and within our businesses, a lot of times we think that the, the way that we can mitigate the stressors is that if we accomplish more things, right? 
So we think that if we made more money, if we had more clients, if we were able to have less things on our to-do list, then we would feel less stressed. And then the way that we think that we are going to accomplish creating more money, creating more clients is just to work harder. Like how many times have you been faced with a problem like not having, um, I, and I know this is one of the main problems is like not having consults come in and it's like, okay, well, I just need to work harder. I just need to do more things. I need to overcompensate. And what actually happens is you put pressure on yourself and then the stress that you put on yourself just starts to build and build and build. And what happens is you think that if you really put the stress on yourself, you're going to get the work done faster. And I think there's a lot of rhetoric around our society, around the stress to success narrative. Like I remember when I was applying even to college, there was this prompt that was like, what was your hardest struggle? And I think even in job interviews, it's like, tell me about a time when you overcame something horrible. So there's this idea that's a subliminal messaging within our society that you have to struggle and you have to be really stressed in order to be prove yourself as successful. And so what happens is it creates this culture of a lot of stress. There also might be like the tornado to potato effect. Maybe if you procrastinate in school and you're like, oh, okay, well, I procrastinated, but I got decent grades. Then we've got this idea that like, okay, the stress right before a deadline is what creates my success. But this doesn't work long-term in your business. And when we're thinking about having a, the reason why this is so critical for solopreneurs to understand is with a job, there are deadlines. Someone else is telling you when you have something due. When you have a, when you're in school, there is a test and there is a timeline. So the, there is an alleviation of pressure at some point. Within your business, no one is giving you a deadline and there are no real endpoints. So you, if that is the way that you've learned to work successfully in the past, we really have to break that because what happens is stress over the long term of your business creates spiraling. It doesn't create success. And I've seen this time and time again with so many of my clients, because what happens is that stress, your brain thinks that stress is the solution, right? So if your brain learns that under stress, I perform well, like how many times have you ever heard? Like I perform well under pressure, you know, it's like, that's like, oh, great. But what happens is pressure doesn't actually make you productive, but your brain gets in this pattern that if I'm stressed, it makes me more productive. And then the rest of your working life, you would create stress and productivity. And you're like, okay, if I'm stressed out, that actually means I'm going to get more done. But what happens is the more you experience stress, especially as a solopreneur, the more burnt out you'll become. So it's just really critical to know that. And what happens is you will go to the point And I have experienced little snippets of this, but I've seen this over the long term for my clients at some times and cases where it's like, I'm just trying to get through the day. The business that you started to create this extra time, the work-life balance, something that is actually your passion project and something that you want to create as your contribution in the world and like literally like leave your legacy becomes this point of contingency and resentment. And it's just like, really devastating. So one of the things that will happen as well is that it can create burnout over time. So when we're thinking about burnout, burnout is just long-term stress. It's something that happens as time goes on. And what happens, and I've had these experiences where I was so burnt out, I felt like I couldn't even get out of bed. And what happens is, again, we think that the more stressed we'll be, the more successful we'll be. But what really happens is if you are really, really burnt out and you're in that potato phase of the tornado to potato effect, what happens is then you actually don't want to do any work anymore. And then what happens is you're like anything that you used to do to get your business out there, whether it would be going to networking events or going and doing some marketing, getting on your story, just telling anyone about your business, 
you start to shut that down. So instead of the stress creating more success in your business, it creates less success. And then what happens is you start to lose your motivation. You start to like, so it's like, you're not as productive. And then you see that you're not as productive. You see that then maybe you're not getting as many sales. Maybe you're not signing as many clients. You're not hitting your goals. And then you start to lose motivation. And then you start to lose interest. And then to get even at some points, this doesn't happen for everybody. And I would hope that we prevent it before this happens. But then what I've seen happen is then your negative effects spill into your home life and your social life and your hobbies. And I just want you to know that your work within your business doesn't have to be this way. And of course, there's still going to be times when this happens with your business. I'm not saying that just because you could attend this webinar, or even if you work with me, that you're never going to feel stressed ever again. I think that would be unrealistic. <laughs> However, I do think that it doesn't have to feel that stress the whole time. And I think one of the reasons that I have been able to grow my business in the way that I have is because I've been able to mitigate these stressors over time. So I think one of the things that helps me and I think helps a lot of my clients is understanding the source of stress. I was definitely that kid that was like, would always ask why. It's like, it was never enough to be like two plus two equals four. It was like, but why? Why is this happening? And so I was the annoying kid that became the annoying teacher and would ask why. And actually, I think it helped me to teach students better. So if you're like me and you like to know the reasoning why things are happening, I'm going to tell you tonight. But first and foremost, remember how I talked about like mentioning things in the chat? I'm going to cover up the um, totals. But I want to know for you, if you were thinking like right now, there are three things that I have listed and I did this in um, my Facebook group as well, but I want to know what causes the most stress for you. One, and if you just want to put the number one, number two, number three, or all three, <laughs> a mix of all three in the chat, here are the things that I have found create the most stress for most solopreneurs. One, wearing too many hats. You have to manage marketing, sales, client work, admin, all these things at once. And it gets extremely stressful. Two, inconsistent cash flow, not knowing where the next client's coming from and feeling like your business is kind of like a mystery. And three, work life balance, struggling to find time for yourself and loved ones. So if you have access to a computer, yeah. Two, I think is like the number one, or it's like, yeah, ironically. <laughs> Number two, I found is the biggest issue that so many people experience is that inconsistent cash flow. And if you think about any, this is one of the things that I think most people don't recognize about solopreneurship. Also, the same results I found within my um within my Facebook group as well. Any other job, you have a consistent income. You know when you're gonna, well, most other jobs, unless you're commission based, but that is also kind of like in a sales role in this sense in this sense. However, within your business, there is no guaranteed income most of the time. There are also deep experiences with clients. You could have sign a client and then they never pay. Like you could get a yes on a consult and then they are really a no. You could have someone sign up to work with you and they could ghost you. You could have somebody um, fail on payments and then you also have expenses that are coming in. You also, within a business, most businesses aren't profitable, which means that they're you're spending more on expenses like learning how to run a business more than you're actually bringing in money. And that most businesses aren't profitable for the first five to eight years. So you're going through this. And if we think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, basic needs are survival needs are home, food, and shelter, right? Those are our basic needs. And if you are relying on your income with your business for those basic needs, it is, of course, going to cause you the most stress because your basic needs aren't being met. So what's going to, of course, this is the number one, that it makes sense as to why this is the number one thing for most people. And what we're going to do is we need to understand why this creates self-sabotage for you. So of course, the main thing that you want, right, is to bring in more cash flow. That's like the main thing that you want to do. 
And then what happens is your brain self-sabotages, which is awesome. (laughs) It's like, great. It's like, okay, we know we want to make more money. And what happens is depending on the, if you're not bringing in clients and you're using your business as a source to cover your basic needs, what happens is your nervous system literally can get to the point of shutdown. Now you might've heard of like the fight, flight, freeze response, but I'm going to go over it in a, just a very, very generalized way. Any neuroscientists, please um, (laughs) forgive my overgeneralization of this, but there is a theory called the polyvagal theory and it deals with your vagus nerve. And again, I'm a science nerd. So I like to know this. If you are not a science person, feel free to tune me out for a second. But one of the things that I found really helpful is that when your nervous system is shutting, when your nervous system feels threatened, if it feels like you are, your business is not doing well, and that's going to affect your basic needs in the future, what happens is it gets spiked. It gets activated. So what happens is where you go in most career, and again, in every career, there are stages of this. But specifically for solopreneurs, especially if your business is your main source of income, what happens is your nervous system sees that there isn't consistent money coming in, which is probably what it's most used to within any other career. And then what happens is it's like, okay, there's a threat. There is a threat to my safety. There is a threat to my future. There is a threat to my future children. All of the things. And your brain is a really good problem-seeking tool. But when it experiences the threat, and it's like, oh my gosh, less consults, less money, it starts to get into your sympathetic nervous system. And then you can go full dorsal vagal and you can get into this freeze response. So this is where stress experiences, and this is where um, the burnout is experienced. So literally, like, scientifically, What's happening in your body is your body is experiencing the stress of your business. And the most tragic part about this is that as you're experiencing the stress from your business, what happens is your brain actually shuts down blood flow to the logic center of your brain called your prefrontal cortex. So if we're thinking about our goal of making more money and helping more people and getting that in there. And you can't logically solve that problem. What happens is you become even less successful. And that's what creates a self-sabotage. Your brain is literally shutting off any problem-seeking tool. And I like to think about, um, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a commercial years ago. And it was like um, all these people that are in a horror movie. And like, it was like a joke. It was, it was not a real horror movie. And they're like, Okay, it's like, let's go by, hide by the chainsaws. Let's go into the creepy house. And then one girl's like, why don't we just get into the running car? And the people are like, no, that's crazy. That's insane. We can't go there. Let's go to the chainsaws. And I think that's the way we like, that's what's happening within your business. What's happening is you are going and you're like, there is a logical way to solve the problems in your business. There is a factual solution. And your brain's like, nope. Let's shut down. Let's not solve these problems. And this is really important to realize. Yes. And so, Nilo, you were like, I feel like I have a flight response when I feel threatened by circumstances, but a freeze response and overwhelm. And that's what we're going to get to figure out. You probably have different responses for lots of different things. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what your threats or what your triggers are to them. We're going to get to know a little bit about the deeper core version of you. And again, one of the things that I want you to recognize is most people who start businesses, I think it's 20% of the public starts a business ever in their life. And I think that most humans that start businesses are extreme high achievers. Usually we're people who work really hard, perfectionists, definitely like someone who has experienced a lot of success in other areas in life. And what happens is you're like, okay, I'm a high achiever. I've been able to figure out everything up until this point. And then what happens is you put way more pressure on yourself. A lot of people also don't think about being an entrepreneur. In any other job, you have one job. 
Like you are a part of the marketing team. You are a sales rep. Within a business, when you are a solopreneur, you are the chief marketing officer, the CMO, but you're also the copywriter. You're also the graphic designer. You're also the sales team. You are also the CFO, which is the chief financial officer. You're the CEO. You got to think big picture. It's like seven different jobs in one. So when you're thinking about the difference of being a solopreneur, it is different than most careers. And so you want to be aware of that within your business. And so what I want you to do tonight is I want you to develop an awareness for what's causing the stressors. And I want you to question and understand where the burnout and stress is coming from. Like Nilo, I want you to understand why like certain experiences create a freeze response and other experiences create a flight response. It's like there are a fight response. I want you to figure out, okay, when does this occur? There's probably a pattern in your brain creates patterns for a really good reason. And we're going to learn how to prevent future stress. So this diagram that I'm going to show you is a very oversimplified version of how your brain works. So I want you to just take that and try. But I also think it's important, again, to know a little bit about why your brain is functioning the way it is. And we're going to get to know why certain things make you go into different fight, flight, freeze, or fawn responses. So this is an oversimplified version of how your subconscious works and how your brain works. When we're thinking about your subconscious, your subconscious, it's, I'm going to use that word interchangeably. You guys might've heard of like it referred as like your lizard brain, your primitive brain. There are lots of different phrases for it. And I'm just going to refer to that part of your brain as your subconscious. There are conscious decisions that we make, like you made a conscious decision to be on this, this lovely webinar this evening, but there are also subconscious decisions that your brain makes. Every single day, your brain wants to function as effectively as possible. So if I thought every day and I had to consciously think, grab a mug, raise mug, drink from mug, it would be exhausting right? It would be like way too much to be thinking about. So your subconscious takes up control and it's like, yeah, we're just going to help things go automatically. We're going to get in a pattern. We're going to get in a groove, which works for you a lot of the time. But there are some self subconscious self-sabotaging things that you're experiencing right now. And that's what we want to be on guard for when we're thinking about the stressors within your business. So when we're thinking about your subconscious and when we're thinking about that part of your brain, which runs the show 80% of the time, by the way, the world is coming at you with 2 million bits of information per second, right? So I just want you to think about as you're experiencing this webinar, you're looking at me, you're hearing me, you're seeing what is on the screen. And that's a lot of stimuli for a human brain. So what happens is that is happening at 2 million bits of information per second, which is an extreme amount of information. And your brain can't hold that information. So it filters it. It just chops stuff out. And it filters everything you're experiencing into 134 bits of information per second, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. 2 million to 134. And so the second that I learned this, I was like, I have to understand what is the filter? What is my filter for getting information in? And what are the things that I'm thinking that are causing a self-sabotaging experience? So for you, when we're thinking about your self, your self-concept, what happens is you have meta programs. Meta programs is short for metacognition. And it's just how you think about yourself. So you might think about yourself as a successful person, and you might think about the way that you show up in the world as like, I'm a successful person. I like to get things done. I am a people pleaser. I am a procrastinator. All of these things are versions of you that your self-concept thinks. You also have attitudes diff towards different things, different preferences for different things, definitely pre preferring to have more clients than less certainly. 
You've got memories of the way that things went before. Maybe there are memories from even like childhood experiences where money was tight, where things that you had deeper experiences that were really scary for you as a young child. And then your brain regresses back to that when it's feeling scared and threatened. You also have decisions that you've made. So you might think about decisions to start your business. You might think about decisions maybe to do or not to do different things. And you might have really good memories of decisions you made, or you might have lots of fears about decisions you made, feeling like you might've made the wrong decision. There are also your values. Like maybe you value being a partner in your relationship that contributes financially. And now you're in a stage of your relationship where you're starting a business and now you're not contributing as much and you feel like there's a disconnect for what you value. You also have might have certain beliefs about yourself. These are beliefs that could stem from yourself, or these could be beliefs that are stemming from other people, but all of these things are part of your self-concept. So what happens is within your life, let's say We have something that happens, like the circumstance of a number in our bank account. And you see that number in your bank account and your brain goes through your little um, CEO self-concept. It goes through your little filter and it says, this is a good number or this is a bad number. And it's always looking for a threat. So what happens is you have a thought. Let's say the number is not a number that you're looking for. You might have a thought, this is bad. Like, something is not working. And then it creates a feeling of panic. So what do you do? Probably catastrophize. You probably spin in overwhelm. You probably are confused about why you, what you're doing isn't working. You probably maybe add on a bunch of different things to your business and then you quit them. And what happens is the result is you undermine your ability to sustain something long enough to make it work. So this is a self-sabotage pattern that you could see. But I want you to know that all of this is up for grabs. The way that you think about yourself, your attitudes, your memories, your decisions, your values, and your beliefs, all of that can be changed. So when you're realizing that you're in a self-sabotaging pattern, when you are in a fight, flight, freeze response, it is so important to figure out what is triggering you and why and figure out how to solve for it before you create a self-sabotage cycle, which will create even more stress for you. So that is very important. And that was a very deep conversation, but I think it's important for you guys to understand that because when I, when I found this out first off, I was like, we need to teach this in school. I was like, I had no idea that my thoughts created my feelings. I was like, why? I thought that I was feeling stressed because of the number of my bank account, not because of the thoughts that I was having. And I can tell you that the number in the bank account, the circumstance will change. And if you don't work on your thoughts, guess what? You will still feel stressed no matter how large or how small the number is. So it's really important that you are able to work on that and solve for it and then create more success in your business because of it. So this is from um, a study that they did on the human brain. And they found out that it takes five positive thoughts to replace every negative thought. So if you, and I think like on average, it's like 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day. So I want you to think about all of those thoughts. And the reason why your brain is hardwired for negativity is because that's what's kept you safe as you have grown, right? If you thought that the girls in the bathroom weren't talking about you and they were, that could mean social suicide. And that could be like a whole situation where you would be isolated. And that was really triggering for any human being as you grow. So you want to make, and that derives from creating safety in social situations. We really grow up as young human beings seeking safety with other humans. So again, if you're experiencing people not booking consults with you. If you do a webinar and nobody comes, which happened for me very frequently and still is something that could definitely happen within my business. If you experience somebody ghosting you, abandonment, failure, and rejection are like true fears to your nervous system. And we have to mitigate them in order to grow. So what is the solution? If we now see that we are self-sabotaging, which is not ideal, 
what we want to do is we want to fix those stressors. So I want you to think about what is a small business stress? Like what's something that is like just a minor irk or an irritation for you? It could be somebody not liking your post. It could be going to make a post yourself. And if you feel comfortable, feel free to put them in the chat, like something that just like kind of bothers you for your business, something that's small. And I want to shift that for you tonight. I want to help you to create a more empowering belief around it. So for me, I know it's like when I put a lot of time and effort into a post and it gets like 10 views, it actually now it's probably more like a hundred views because I've gotten a couple more followers since then, but that is the worst. I found that that is not a super fun situation. So I want you to think about, and hey, Karen, it's good to see you. I want you to think about any small business stresses that you experience, and we're going to shift that tonight. So yeah, thank you for sharing, Nilo. Um, my mindset thing is that my niche isn't important enough to share. No one cares. So I think that like when you're thinking about your business, I want you to think about in a niche being a subset of the population that you support. I want you to think about any time that you go to write a post, any time that you are going to talk to someone about a sales call, maybe you're in a networking group telling somebody what you do and you have the thought that nobody cares, it's going to make it a lot harder. So what we want to do is we want to figure out. Yes. And she was like, I help women overcome procrastination for good. So as a woman who is an overcoming procrastinator, like I have overcome that identity of a procrastination, I want you to think about that being something that changed my life. That is something that is huge. And your brain is like, yeah, no one cares. It's interesting. And then, yeah, it was also like going to networking events and not sure if people care or interested in the work that you do. Whereas you help women in corporate careers overcome overwhelm for good. And your brain's like, yeah, but it's not good enough. So a lot of those thoughts are so normal. I've absolutely had them and I have them in different phases in my business. Also, it's like, I overcome them at one level. It's like, I can overcame it for social media. And then I go to a networking event and I'm like, oh, I'm re-triggered. And then I like lead a, a webinar and I'm like, oh, I'm triggered. And then I overcome it. So what we want to do is I want you to think about that impact, that thought, no one cares. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to exchange just one limiting belief and we're going to make it a more empowering belief. This isn't like a toxic positivity exercise. It's just something to get you out of a stress response so that you can actually take action and get back into your work. And then Sally said, a stress that I'm dealing with right now is that my post is going to offend people or lead people to judging me. Oh my gosh, this is huge. At the beginning of my business. I didn't post for two months at the beginning of my business because I was so scared that people would judge me and think that I was like, because I was a life coach that they were like, oh my gosh, she's going to um, teach me how to run my life. And I'm so scared of being misunderstood. I am so, so with you. And it's like that fear of being seen, that visibility. A lot of us, when we put ourselves out there for something that we feel passionate about, of course, that can be terrifying. And it, yeah, and I'm proud of you for facing it today, Sally. Amazing. And then also not coming up with the best solution for your client. Yes, that's huge. I was very, very scared at the beginning of my business when I was thinking about like, well, what if I don't help them enough? What if they don't get everything they need? And it led for a lot of self-sabotaging patterns we learned. Yes, and we're going to work on those, Nilo. We're going to get to the more empowering belief, but I love that shift already. So again, when you're thinking about doing this, you're actually, again, as if you needed more things to work about as a solopreneur, but it's just helpful to know that what you're doing tonight is activating three different parts of your brain. And it's creating these new skill sets that you need as a CEO to move your business forward to six, multiple six figures and create a stronger business. So first and foremost, there's metacognition, just having your awareness and the ability to understand what you're thinking. So the fact that you guys have been able to list those fears and concerns is already huge. That is already showing up as a six multiple six-figure CEO. You're also developing the skill of inquiry. 
So we're getting curious and compassionate, and we're going to question where these thoughts came from without judgment. If we think about being the CEO of a multi-million dollar company or a billion dollar company, if you solve problems in a stressed out state, like I mentioned, it's never going to actually create long lasting solutions. So you need to act like that within your own brain as the CEO of your business today, which is really cool. And then also neuroplasticity. So right now, even just identifying and having this awareness for the things that trigger your brain already creates the start of a change. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to literally change the neural pathways. It's like a highway in your brain. So depending on what is triggering you within your business, you're going to have some limiting thoughts. And I think you guys have already listed these. And as many of you are life coaches, you probably have some solid awareness around them. And this is what I like to do in the present moment. So in the present moment, when I notice that I'm getting, I'm feeling the fight, flight, freeze response, I'm feeling the stress response. I like to pause and I'm like, why? For instance, within um, my business, there were so many thoughts that I would have, like, this is hard. And I knew it was creating a stress response. And an, even like, if I were to narrow it down even more, would be overwhelmed. You know, when I was thinking about like, really going through and posting all the time and not having anyone like it or do a, a consult, I had this thought, it, this is hard and I felt overwhelmed. So again, I want you to think about what is a thought for you? What are the thoughts that come up for you? And then how can you shift it in a more positive or empowering way just to get you out of the stress response? So for me, what I was thinking, and I went seven months without a consult at the very beginning of my business after coasting consistently every single day for seven months, I went from October to April, no consults. And instead of just sitting in the, this is hard. I had this thought I can do hard things. I was like, I can do hard things. I know I want this business to work. Coaching has changed my life. I literally like every single piece of my life had changed because of coaching. And I was like, I can do this and I can help other people with this. I also had this thought I'll I'll never get this finished. This is about like my website a lot of the time, this would be a lot of tech stuff. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm never going to get this finished. I'm never going to get it figured out. This also came up when I was making the modules for my program. And I was just like, this is awful. <laughs> it was like, I don't even know. And it created a lot of feelings of doubt. And I want you to think about if you're making modules for a program, or if you're making any, like a, a this PowerPoint presentation, for instance, and you are having this thought, I'm never going to get this finished the whole time. It's going to be so much harder to finish your project. Versus I will absolutely finish this. Like I'm the kind of person that I, if I put my mind to something, I will get it done. And so that makes me feel determined and focused. And that gets me out of the stress response and into action and just getting it done. Another thing is like this thought, like, I don't know how to do this. When I was figuring out how to get up my um, website, not my website, my um, email list, I found that that was so, again, a lot of tech, but there's a lot of tech that you have to learn as a solopreneur. And I was like, I don't know how to do this. I have no idea how to actually get this done or even finances and things like that. And then I had this thought, I can figure it out. Like I truly believe that within my soul, I've created a version. My self-concept, the way I view myself is that I will get it done and I will figure anything out. So again, feel free to share in the chat. I feel like, um, Like, I do think that, like, at least five people care is what Neela said. She's saying that, like, that gets her, instead of no one cares, going into a place at least, there might be five people that care. And I'm willing to show up and get things done for them. When you're thinking about the fear of not coming up with the best solution for your client, it's like, it might not be the best solution, but it's going to be the best thing I can give them at this time. And I'm going to make it work for them. When you're saying, I'm not going to offend Sally, the thought about like offending or leading people to judging you, I would be like, yep, people might judge me, but I do think that there are going to be people that this is going to help. And I'm willing to put myself out there and be judged and offend other people to help someone else. Yeah. Thinking about going to networking events and people, people thinking that people don't care or people don't think they're interested in the work that you do. I want you to think about if you had continued within your career 
And if someone had helped you when you were feeling the things that you were, that always helps me get out of my head. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll do it for them. Milo, thinking about all, and I know that you shared about like the no one cares being the thought and being like, I want you to think about like even bigger picture is if just five, even just five people care. I think that if you were to help five women overcome procrastination, how much better would the world be? How much generational change would they be? Those women are, would they become leaders? Would they become examples of what's possible for their children and maybe just others in the community around them? How much of a difference could that be? And that can really shift you into action. Also, it's like Yah said, the transitioning thought that people, I, people care that I coach women and who want to experience success in their careers and love their lives outside of work. I can't imagine anyone being like, yeah, I really don't care about like loving my life. Like, I can't wait to like look back on my life and be like, yeah, it was kind of shitty. No, I'm sorry. I'm cursing. Oh, I was like, <laughs> it was like, I curse a lot. That's my bad. But I was like, you know what I mean? Like, can you imagine? It's like, I think that that's a huge thing. And I want you to think about that too. And then, yes, I mean, like, I really do think that like just one life change creates such a positive ripple effect. And I am so proud of you guys for seeing this. So within this, when you're able to do this, every single one of you on this call has an incredible business and an incredible life, and you can help people. And I want you to think about the results of you just shifting slightly within your business and within your life is that you, not only are you going to be able to remove unnecessary, unnecessary stress from your life, but it's also going to create the motivation for you to make really, really amazing change. Like every single person on this call can make one life better just by being in it. And I want you to feel that after tonight, going into tomorrow on Tuesday, we're coming into the fourth quarter of the year. I really want you to, to feel that motivation and be able to dig deep, overcome those stressors and finish this year really strong. I also think that a huge benefit of this is that you're going to be able to identify problems objectively and solve them more efficiently. So within my personal life, and I'll be sharing about this at some other point, um, I'm going, we're going to go through fertility and we're going to freeze our embryos at some point this year. And on Friday, I found out that that could potentially cost 60 grand that I don't have. And I was like, whoa, like, I don't know who has just, I mean, maybe there are people, but like 60 grand, just chilling that you weren't expecting to spend. I thought it was going to be 15,000. And then there's like 45 for some extra tests. And that was terrifying. And I could feel myself getting into like a total by flight freeze state. And I felt so stressed. And it also took some co-regulation, which is something that you can do is you can talk to other people and they can help you regulate. And my amazing partner, Rob was like, Hey, we're going to figure this out. We're going to get through this. And I was like, okay, how could we come up with 60 grand if we needed to for this to go on? And, or if we need to wait a little bit, can we do that? And we sat down, we planned out all the finances. We went through everything. We were able to figure out, okay, like how can we pay in a payment plan? Can we figure out things like this? Are there different ways that we can go through this? And Rob brought up a really great point. He was like, it's like if you bought a car, like a Jeep, and you're like, just bought a Jeep off the lot. And it's like, you could probably pay that back over years. I'm sure we can do something like that. And then it can help you create better solutions and we can solve it versus being like, wow, well, it's like, well, I just can't come up with the money and it's going to be terrible. It's like that helps you to solve it more efficiently. And now we're like, yep, we're going to figure it out. Just got off the phone with my doctor today. She's like, we're going to figure out. We've got another test scheduled. We're going to figure out the pricing. She was like, I've got price comparison for three different options. But I, if I had gotten on the call and I was like, I just can't, <laughs> it would probably not help. So that's something that you can have access to as well. And last but not least, I want to bring joy back to your life. Like if you think about your businesses, when you're thinking about this stress cycle, you started your solopreneur career to help other people and also to bring joy to your life. Maybe create that work-life balance, be able to work from home. And instead of working, it was like, I decided to like work for myself and now I'm working 24 seven. I want you to actually bring joy back to your life. 
And since I've been able to do things like this, even though there are some stressors going on in life and there's always going to be stressors going on in life and always stressors that are going to go on in business, I'm still going to be able to like live my life. And I'm not going to let, like, I don't want the stressors be like to look back on my life and be like, you know what? I'm really glad I was stressed and I like played it kind of small. In fact, I'm actually going to Italy on Wednesday for 72 hours and it's going to be amazing. Even with the eggs and even if with all the stuff going on, I was like, you know what? We're still going to work through this. And I want you to live like that too. So that activity of in the moment doing the limiting to empowering belief is really helpful. And then every single morning, my brain starts out really negative. I wake up with a lot of anxiety personally, and that might be something that you experience as well. So to get ahead of myself and prevent future anxiety, knowing that there's the five positive thoughts that replace every negative thought, I list out right away when I start the day. And it's not usually too hard to find. I list out five negative thoughts, five limiting beliefs right away. I'm like, no one will pay me. No one will come. The, um, this launch will fail. Everyone will leave. And like, you know, whatever. It's like all the thoughts. <laughs> it's like, and everyone will hate me. And I'm like, excellent. Thank you, brain. Here's some more empowering beliefs just to start the day. And so it gets me started on the right foot. And I coach myself pretty much every morning. A lot of times I miss, um, over the weekend, but this is something I, I got in the habit of doing since 2018. When I started working with my coach, I would send her my coaching every day. And I really do think it's a, a huge testament as to why my business has been able to grow as quickly as it has. Cause I notice it when it happens. So my goal is that tonight that you are already developing your CEO self-concept. And I was like, Kirsten, it is so good to see you. I was like, I know that you missed the beginning of it, but even just you being here right now, I was like, joining us this lovely evening, you are already going to listen and improve your self-concept. Like just the awareness that you get from being here, putting things in the chat, just understanding a little bit more about where stress comes from. Already, you are doing so much better than so many other people. And not that it's like, oh, no worries at all. I was like, putting the little ones in bed is a very important thing. But then what's going to happen is you're going to build some awareness around your limiting thoughts. And you're going to start to see some trends. And from that, you're going to start to question where things came from. You're like, is this something that happened in my childhood? Is this subliminal messaging I got from society? Is this something that like I was told once by one person and I really stuck on to it? You know, why is that? What am I, why am I thinking these limiting things? And then you're going to choose intentionally. It's like, okay, thank you, brain. The girl from middle school who told me this negative thought, it's like, she, I don't want her to run my business nor my life anymore. So thank you for keeping me safe. And then I'm going to choose to live in a more empowering way, especially running my business from an empowered state. And then last but not least, I'm always here to support you. Whether or not we work together, I'm here for you. I'll list my email at the end to make sure that you're growing because your business is so important and you are making such a positive difference in the world. And I want to help you with that in every single possible way that I can. And if you're looking for things to do, what next? If you're thinking about next steps. I would love to offer you an opportunity to join the Six Figure Systems Mastermind. Now, within the program, I am doing early enrollment right now, which means that you can get two months of early access to all the modules. And I'll share about that in a little bit. But when you join Six Figure Systems, one of the things that's really important to me is you get your time back. So you have an eight hour work week where you can get all of the back-end things done for your business, for the marketing, managing, leads, planning, so that way you can focus on what you actually probably enjoy, which is serving and helping your people. You're also going to get clear and confident marketing. You're going to know how to batch. You're going to get your marketing concepts done if you would choose to use the system a whole month in advance. And then you're going to write your content and your copy every single week. So that way you don't have to worry about like, what am I going to post today? You're going to know. You're also going to have an e easy lead generation protocol where you're just going to talk to 10 people a day for the 30 minutes in the morning. 
And then you're also going to respond to people for 30 minutes in the evening. So it's going to be a huge and easy lead generation protocol that literally, if you take 30 minutes a day, talk to 10 people, that's 2,500 conversations a year, depending on what your offer is. That's if you have like a 2K offer, that's 2,500 conversations. If you convert 2% of them, that's 104K business. So I made it just, again, I'm a math girl, science girl. I like to know the numbers. And so I think that's just, I want to make my business statistically inevitable to succeed. And that's what I want to do for you. I also want to improve your sales conversion. I know that for me, it was very difficult to even just get people on a sales call. And it was critical that I converted people on the call. Like I mentioned, seven months without a console, guys. Like I needed to make sure that I actually got these people in and working with me if I could really help them. And I want to help you to help them as well. And also there's going to be support one-on-one -on -one and within the community. So one of my clients, Holly, I mentioned her because I had her on my podcast and I plan on having many guests of my amazing clients on my podcast as we grow. But um, I want to share Holly's story just because she is featured and her business went from 53K to 135K in a year. So pretty amazing. And just three months of the program, she'd already doubled her um, consult conversion and she had fully broke her practice. And this is something I would love for you guys too. So within six figure systems, like I mentioned, you're going to master marketing, get that powerful positioning strategy. You're going to create more sales. You're going to generate and manage leads. I have a whole spreadsheet for you to track every single person. You'll get to know people who are following you really deeply and actually get to know your audience. And then you're also going to know how to track your time and finances. So the way I like to think about it is it's like six months and now if you do the bonus um, early enrollment, that would be eight months for you to get direction, clarity, and strategy. And this round of the mastermind, if you decide to do early enrollment, you're going to end at the end of May, 2025. So you're going to get me all the way through the beginning of the year, which is something that I think is going to be insanely helpful for you to have me through the whole fourth quarter and then all the way through the first quarter and into the second quarter. And I know that we have just another minute left, so I will be mindful of your time. If you have to roll, go ahead, but I'm also going to definitely make sure that we continue to cover this and feel free to watch the replay. And then, so within the mastermind, what we're going to do is you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one call at the very beginning of the program to make what I call your six figure offer. And you're also going to get weekly Q and A starting in November so that you can get help to reach your goals. November 18th is going to be systems week. So it's the week before Thanksgiving and every single day that week, we are going to get the live learning modules. You are going to get on Monday, you're gonna talk, we'll talk about offers, Tuesday marketing, Wednesday sales, Thursday managing leads and Friday planning so that you don't have to do, and I know for me, I like have paid an exorbitant amount of money for coaching as my life has gone on. And I have such a hard time watching the modules. I also have ADHD, so that doesn't help. But I want to make sure that helps for you. And I want to make sure that you actually like get the information that you're paying for within the program. So you're going to get that live and in action with me. You're also going to get 24-7 messaging within the group. And again, it's going to be two hours a week. But at the beginning of that call, you're going to get a feedback form. So I'm going to be able to know exactly where you are within your business. And last but not least, you're going to have an amazing community of entrepreneurs that you're going to be able to bounce ideas off of. They're going to be able to collaborate with many people, my clients that are on this call, they do testimonial swaps with each other. They get a chance to collaborate with each other. And it's a really, really positive environment that I found is so, so supportive and really helps a lot of people grow. So if you're thinking, oh, hey, why would I do early enrollment? when the group doesn't start until November, I would love for you, if you are on this call and you have any uncertainty about what is your offer, what is the duration of your offer, how much is your offer, and really the value that you're giving people within your program, I would highly, highly, highly recommend doing a consult and or joining this round of Six Figure Systems so that you can get a chance to make your profitable offer now. We next week, I think is pretty booked up, but the week after that, I've got 
so much time and we can make your offer and make it something that you feel super confident about. You'll be able to use it for your marketing calendar. You'll be able to use it for your consult calls. And I call it a six figure offer because I make sure that it's something that people are ready to invest in no matter what population you serve. Then you are also going to something I learned within this past round of six figure systems is how to make a Google document or a Google folder with every single system. Shout out to Shonda. One of my amazing clients was literally like, here's how you make a copy of all the systems for all of your clients. And it was like, this is incredible. So now from now on out, here on out, every single person is going to get every single system, your own copy that you can edit. I can look at, it's going to be amazing. And I really am just so excited for this. You're going to get every single system, not only for the essential systems, but for like how to do projections, how to do a webinar, all of that is going to be pre-made for you. And I'll send it to you right away when you sign up and, or after a consult and you sign up. Then you're also going to get all of the modules ahead of time. So this is something that I have found to be insanely, insanely helpful because within my business, if I can look at things ahead of time, you could actually implement all of the things that are in these systems. And you could start to do that before the holidays come. So you can start to tweak them. And what I like to say is I like to say you adopt, you could adopt my systems completely you can adapt them to fit your business's needs, or you can abandon them and do something else that can be helpful. Well, I'm so glad. I was like, I, I saw that like, this has been very helpful and I'm so, so glad. I am so, so excited for all of you. So if you would like to do early enrollment and you want to join us, there is going to be an annual plan module. And I wanted to make sure that like, if you want to do a consult with me, that would be a 30 minute call. And if you sign up before Friday, I will send you the exact module that I use for my clients. So you're going to get that ahead of time and you're going to see kind of what it's like a little look behind the scenes and within the annual plan module, one of the things that we're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to plan out the rest of your year. So I'm including this just until Friday. If you book your consult after Friday, that is totally fine, but you can get the annual plan module within the rest of the mastermind. But if you just book a consult, which is a 30 minute call for us to talk about where your business is, where you want your business to go within the next six months, talk through the systems that I can provide for you and how I would customize them to fit your business's needs. Just by signing up, getting a 30 minute planning session, I would also send you the annual plan module just for showing up and really focusing on the future of your business. So that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for coming on this Monday night. I'm going to put the link to enroll in the mastermind. And if you want to click on the link that I'll put in the chat, here is the link to book a consult call. You also should have a email in your inbox that has the replay at the very bottom. And within that email, there's also the link to book a consult call or to pay. So that is in here. Send down over and here's a book link to book a consult call. Here are the dates. So like I mentioned, systems week is the week of November 18th, 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern every day, Monday through Friday. And then the weekly calls are going to be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. And it, they'll after systems week, we're going to start. We're going to take a week off for the week of Thanksgiving. Um, and then the first week of December will be the week the six months start. And we'll go all the way until May. So if you guys are, I, I'm the kind of person I'm like, I want to know the features. I'm like, what am I actually getting within the program? So you're going to also get um, bonuses, like how to build a website. We're going to have um, somebody come on and talk about finances. We got like lots of fun guest speakers coming. This past month, we did one on S systems, um, SOPs, standard operating procedures. That was really fun. If you're like me and a super nerd and want to see like what it looks like within the portal, I show you exactly what it looks like. The portal for my mastermind, I have the modules within um, a website tool called Google Classroom. And I show you like all the modules, everything that you would get from here. 
If you would like to just sign up right now, you are more than welcome to. If you do the painful, I know many people have been talking to me about like making sure that all of your expenses for this year are included. So it makes your taxes a little bit better for this year. So if you want to do the one-time payment painful, you are more than welcome to, to count all of your expenses towards 2024. Or if you were to start the 850 payment plan, you would start and it would be September. So we do September, October, November, December. So you get four payments on this year's taxes and then two other payments on next year's taxes. If your accountant needs a, um, a form for me, I'm more than happy to fill it out. And then I also, this is an old um, frequently asked questions um, replay. So if you want to learn about some questions, I'm going to also be sending you guys an email about that on Wednesday. If you have any other questions, feel free to watch that. And then this is just another webinar that I did explaining what the eight hour work week looks like. And if you're like, wait, making six figures with eight hour work weeks, what does that look like for behind the scenes? And I'm like, I will show you. This was a cool one. Cause I even include a calendar on that one. So are there any questions about stress or how I worked through stress, anything like that, that I could support you with this evening? I know one of the things that, um, one of my clients was saying that was a stressor is what, what do you do when there are different circumstances that happen within your business? Um, we were coaching on that this past week and, the circumstances was a death in the family. And there are lots of things that happen like that, unfortunately, within the lifetime of your business. So when unfortunate circumstances happen, I like to take one of two approaches. I th This is a question that actually came up also from um, a person I've been talking to um, on Instagram. And when there's an intense circumstance, I've think that there's a place for limiting to empowering beliefs. And I also think that there's a time when we don't want to include a lot of toxic positivity and like try and be like, yay, I'm happy that something, a circumstance that was really unfortunate happened. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to think about suffering is inevitable or pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional and looking at the circumstances and really feeling into the struggles and love that you might've had for a person and just kind of like having this acceptance for where your business is or where your life is at. And you can either take a pause. Like sometimes I do like to take a pause for my business. I don't think that that makes you a better or worse entrepreneur. And then you can come back stronger afterwards. But that was a question that someone asked if I could answer this evening. Are there any other questions? And feel free to like unmute or put it in the chat. Yes, I was like, um, Eileen said, I'm glad you focused on metacognition, thinking about thinking. It's huge when you're able to like, and I think that um, actually my mom said this, um, it's understanding what you do subconsciously, consciously. It's like making the subconscious conscious. So I think that's a huge skill as a CEO of your company. And I'm so excited to see what all of you create. I'm going to read reaching back out to anyone and making sure that you guys get any support that you need. If you have any questions about this, questions about early enrollment, questions about your business, I am here for you. I know that having a business is extremely challenging and I'm here to support you any step of the way. And I can't wait to see you guys for the next webinar. Have a great night, everybody.